Good morning all. Based on the previous videos in which we had discussed the index properties and soil classification, we'll try to do a set of numerical problems. Question. 500 grams of dry soil was subjected to sieve analysis. The weight of the soil retained on each sieve is as follows. You're asked to plot the gradation curve and determine the percentage gravel, percentage coarse sand, percentage medium sand, fine sand, silt and clay fractions, etc. Also, you are asked to classify the soil. So what you are given with is a set of sieves starting from 4.75 up to 74 micron and then pan. And the weight retained on each sieve is given. Plus, the total weight that you had taken for the sieve analysis is also given as 500 grams. So when you add all the values of weights retained here, and when you compare it with the 500 gram already given, you'll get the weight of the soil that's retained in the pan. And based on the weight retained on each sieve and the pan, you can calculate the percentage weight retained because you already know the total weight is 500 gram. And from the percentage weight retained, you'll get the cumulative percentage weight retained, which will in turn help you to find the percentage finer like this you have the percentage weight retained cumulative percentage weight retained and percentage finer for example 10 grams retained on 4.75 so 10 divided by 500 multiplied by 100 will give you two percentage 165 divided by 500 multiplied by 100 will give you 33 percentage likewise you will get the percentage weight retained. Now cumulative percentage weight, re weight retained is nothing but uh, if you take an example you have 2 here and 35 is 2 plus 33 and 55 is 2 plus 33 plus 20 likewise. So what you do is you take the cumulative values of all the weight percentages which falls above the particular sieve. So you can fill this column the sum of which should be equal to 100 at the pen and percentage finer is nothing but 1 minus percentage weight retained or in this particular case you have 100 minus percentage weight retained so that's 98 65 45 etc and to the bottom you will definitely have zero if you have not missed out any particles so if all the soil that was taken 500 grams is Within this spectrum of sieves, you will definitely have 100 here and you will definitely have 0 here. So anyways, for particle size distribution curve, what you should do is you should plot sieve size versus percentage finer. Now before that, you are asked to get the percentage gravel. The percentage gravel is nothing but the percentage that you have above 4.75 millimeter sieve so that's two percentage here percentage gravel has nothing but the size which is greater than 4.75 millimeter sieve that is two percent or 100 minus percentage finer this is again two percent now percentage coarse sand is between 4.75 and two millimeters that's 98 minus 65 or 33 percentage percentage medium sand is a size between 425 micron and 2 millimeters so that is the difference between 65 and 28 turns out to be 37 percentage and percentage fine sand is between 75 micron and 425 micron so that's a difference between 28 and 4 24 percentage and water passes 75 micron and gets retained in a pan is clay fraction 4 percentage now based on the same table that we have here sieve size versus percentage finer you can plot the gradation curve so in this particular slide, you can see that gravel has a size above 4.75, coarse sand 
is a size above 2 but less than 4.75 medium sand is above 425 micron but less than 2 millimeters fine sand is between 75 microns and 425 microns and clay fraction is whatever that you have which is finer than 75 micron so percentage finer versus sieve size when plot will give you the gradation curve which will help you to classify a soil so you have the gradation curve here which is fundamentally a plot between the sieve size in log scale and percentage finer in the decimal scale now when you take a look at this you need to get d10 d30 and d60 to get cu and cc so d10 is nothing but the size that corresponds to 10 percentage finer likewise d30 is a size that corresponds to 30 percentage finer and likewise we have d60 here so to get d10 what you do is you draw a line which passes through 10 percentage finer let that meet the curve at this line drop a perpendicular and that will meet the sieve size at a point corresponding to d10 likewise you'll get d30 somewhere here and d60 somewhere here so the values that i was able to make out from this graph which was drawn in excel are this d10 0.13 millimeters d30 0.5 millimeters and d60 around 1.8 millimeters based on which you can get cu d30 is given d60 is given d10 is given so that will give you cu uniformity coefficient and cc now in this particular question cu value is greater than 6 and cc is between 1 and 3 so you can classify that to be well graded sand sw next question is based on the relative density that we discussed a few videos previously a soil has a dry density of 1.816 gram per cc in natural condition when 410 grams of the soil was poured in a vessel in a very loose state its volume was found to be 290 cc's the same soil when vibrated and compacted was found to have a volume of 215 cc you're asked to get the relative density now you have two different formula to get the relative density one is based on void ratio and the second is based on the density relative density is equal to rho minus rho minimum by rho max minus rho minimum multiplied by rho max by rho so in which rho is given 1.816 gram per cc and to get rho minimum you are given with the data so rho is given 1.816 gram per cc to get rho maximum and rho minimum you have the data already given because you have 410 grams of soil which when occupied in the loose state it had 290 cc so the loose state will give you raw minimum and when the soil was vibrated it had 215 cc that corresponds to maximum density so you have row you have row maximum and you have row minimum you just have to substitute in the equation and you will get a value around 85 percentage or 0 0.856 very simple question the only thing that you need to identify is that to get the row minimum you need to have the maximum volume and to get the maximum density you need to have the minimum volume 85.6 percentage next question the liquid limit test using Casse grand as a apparatus on a given soil sample of clay gave the following results fine the liquid limit and the flow index this is the data water content versus number of blows is given for water content 70 percentage the number of blows obtained was 5 and for 44 percentage the number of blows obtained was 45 of course as you increase the water content the number of blows required decreases the number of blows required 
to make the cakes come together will decrease so fundamentally w and n are inversely proportional so if you could just recollect what we had discussed in the Cassegrain grandes apparatus and the determination of liquid limit you would probably remember a flow curve right a flow curve is plot between the number of blows in log scale and the water content in decimal scale in the y-axis so n is given you should plot that in the log scale water content is given in percentage so you'll get a curve like this i have four points w n four points are here and to get the liquid limit what you should do is you need to plot you need to extend a line from number of blows 25 so you have 10 blows here 20 blows here 30 blows here so somewhere in between 20 and 30 you have 25 like this so you need to draw a line like this let that meet the flow curve at this point extend a line parallel to the x-axis and that will meet the y-axis at the point which corresponds to the liquid limit now the second part the flow index will be there for you to write an assignment just to refresh flow index is nothing but the slope of this curve you take any two readings that falls between this range of line you take water content corresponding these to these two readings w1 and w2 divided by the log n values and you will get the slope of the curve that will be in short the flow index next question you're asked to classify the soil based on Indian standard system and the data given is limited to IP liquid limit percentage passing 4.75 millimeter sieve and percentage passing 75 micron sieve so IP plasticity index is 10 percentage liquid limit is 40 percentage Percentage passing 4.75 millimeter is 60. Percentage passing 75 micron is 45 percentage. So you have a set of sieves like this. Let's assume it starts from 4.75. It has 2.36, 1.18, 600 microns, 300 microns, 150 microns, 75 microns, and then the pan. Let's assume that way. To start with, let's again assume that the total soil that you had taken is 100 grams it's your choice for simplicity i've taken 100 grams just to understand the concept so which means that the soil that goes into the 4.75 millimeter sieve is 100 grams and when you allow it allow the sieve shaker to work it will get spread across each of these sieves and whatever that passes through 75 micron will be retained in the pan so in short, 100 grams will be distributed in some percentages along these sieve sizes. Now, if the question says that the passing 4.75 millimeter sieve is 60 percentage, which means 60 gram, because you have 100 grams assumed. So the soil that passes 4.75 millimeter, which falls below this line, is 60 grams second data given is percentage passing 75 micron sieve 45 percentage which is 45 gram in this particular case because you have assumed 100 grams so 75 micron is here and the soil that passes the 75 micron will be in this zone right that's 45 gram so you have 60 grams here and 45 grams here in short you have 60 minus 45 grams distributed along this depth like this so the percentage which passes through 4.75 and retained in the 75 is 15 gram and since you have taken 100 grams here and 60 grams passes through 4.75 you will have 40 grams here 40 grams here now to classify the soil this data will help you 40 gram plus 15 gram 
is retained on 75 micron sieve. So the soil weight retained on 75 micron is 15 plus 40 which is 55 grams out of the 100 grams which means more than 50 50% is retained on 75 micron and hence you can classify it broadly as coarse grained soil. Now to get the sand fraction, sand fraction is the one that falls between 4.75 and 75 micron. So that's 15 grams. Gravel fraction is what falls above 4.75, that's 40 grams. So you have coarse grain soil and sand fraction is 15 gram, gravel fraction is 40 gram. Now out of the 55 grams which is retained in 75 micron sieve, more than 50 percentage that is 40 gram by 55 gram is gravel, right? So you have 55 gram above 75 micron in which 40 grams is retained in 4.75 which means it's gravel. 50% or more than that is 40 grams and it's gravel. And 45 grams passes the 75 micron sieve. 45 gram passes the 75 micron sieve so the percentage finer is 45 percentage because the total grams that you have taken is 100 grams. So this is greater than 12 percentage the limit and hence the soil can either be silty gravel or clay gravel. Now for us to choose between the silty gravel and clay gravel you are provided with the data liquid limit 40 percentage and plasticity index 10 percentage. So based on the plasticity chart, the soil will fall below the A line. A line is the one that you have an equation of 0.73 multiplied by liquid limit minus 10, which you can refer back in a few sets of videos previously. So based on the A line, you can see that the soil falls below it and it will be silty or GM. So this is a final classification. So in short what you have done is you have fundamentally classified the soil to be coarse grained based on the retention on 75, gram, 75 microns and, and further you have zoomed in on gravel based on the fact that more than 50 percentage is gravel and based on the percentage finer you have zoomed in on GM or GC and liquid limit and plasticity limit plasticity index will help you to sort between GM and GC and in this particular case since it falls below the A line you can classify that to be GM or silty gravel. So whenever a question is given such that only percentages are provided it's always better to have these kind of representations at least for you to work out on your own mind for us to help with calculations.